Good morning, everyone. This is Trish Miller coming back at you with yet another rambling video. Uh, so, I had actually planned this video in advance and wanted to do it on Dr. Seuss Day. Unfortunately, my dumb butt didn't know that Dr. Seuss Day was March 1st. So we're doing it a little late this year, and then maybe next year I'll try to make some green eggs and ham or something. I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to take this moment to talk about one of my favorite childhood Dr. Seuss books. A book that I had as a little kid, and one that I had gotten as an adult about 2016 or so, and unfortunately was, well not unfortunately, but was sadly retired. Well, not even sadly, but like, was retired uh, in, was it 2020, 2021? I forget. Anyway, today we're talking about ba -da -ba -ba, McGilligot's Pool. This is one of uh, Dr. Seuss's older books, as you can tell by the fact that it is, it's in a more monochromatic style. Like, here, let me pull up one of the drawings quickly. Here we go. I do like the older Dr. Seuss works, and because, the, the, like, for what they lack in color, they make up for in just, like, kind of a depth, almost. Like, look at that. That is a gorgeous shot. Good composition. Perfectly frames the text. Like, Dr. Seuss was as much a editor as he was a... As he was... Oh, God, this is too hot. I'm sorry. I gotta take this off. I got that last Halloween on sale. Well, November 1st on sale. And thought I could find a use for it, but it's it's too hot to wear it. My head is too... My head is too fat. I'm already turning red. I'm turning the AC back on. Hopefully that doesn't get too loud for y'all. Anyway. So, I'm going to read you the book, show you the pictures, and then we'll talk about why this book was retired. Um... So you see here this beautiful image of the swirling water, the fish, and the worm. It's just a good, like, again, the composition is phenomenal. It's not just a well-illustrated book. It's not just a well-written book. It's a well-made book. And, you know, that, that, that's weird to say because oftentimes, you know, the writers don't have to be illustrators, nor do they have to be editors. You know, those are three separate professions. But Dr. Seuss had to kind of do all three. And yes, I know there is some rumors going around that his wife may have actually been responsible for some of his best books. But that's neither here nor there. The, the point is, Theodore Geisel was a good man, a progressive. Like, he was actually on... He was actually critiquing America's apathy toward World War II before we even got to it. You know, he's he was he was kind of there with Captain America because Captain America punched Hitler before we even declared war on Germany. Anyway, back to this. We 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 first see these uh, uh, elderly farmer chastising a young lad. Young man, laughed the farmer, you're sort of a fool. You'll never catch a fish in McGilligan's pool. And here we delve into what I believe is a later reprint, because it's more in color. The pool is too small, and you might as well know it. When people have junk, here's the place that, that they throw it. You might catch a boot, or you might catch a can. You might catch a bottle, but listen, young man. If you sat 50 years with your worms and your wishes... You'd grow a long beard long before you'd catch fishes. And we have this humorous picture of a bunch of junk at the bottom of the pool. Again, the worm tied around the hook, or not even tied, he's more like, um, more like just kind of like, like how a boa kind of wraps around a branch. And a cute little bird at the top corner there. Oh, hey, the boy's name is Marco. Hmm, answered Marco. It may be you're right. I've been here three hours without one single bite. 
There might be no fish, but then again, well, there might. Because you never can tell what goes on down below. This pool might be bigger than you or I know. And we have young Marco looking into the pool, followed by ow, him daydreaming. This might be a pool, like I've read of in books, connected to one of those underground brooks. An underground river that starts here and flows right under the pasture, and then, and then, well, who knows? And then we go back. So, like, it seems that as we delve more into the hit, into, like, what the pool could be, the more color shows up. So here we see the, the pool going through the thing, and, and I like that it does show the, the farmer's junk in the bottom of the pool there, through the pasture. It might go along, down where no one can see, right under State Highway 203, right under the wagons, right under the toes, of Mrs. Umbroso, who's hanging out clothes. It might keep on flowing, perhaps who can tell, right under the people in Steen's Hotel, right under the grass where they're playing croquet, and under the mountains, far, far away. And here we see, like, as the pool's going along, past all the, all the things... You know, described of in the poetry, but also just very well illustrated. Like, Dr. Seuss, he, he had good, like, composite... Again, he had good artistic skill. You know, it, it, it takes a lot to make such simplistic sketches read so well. Almost, I was almost a poet there, rhyming skill and well. There might be a river, now mightn't it be, connecting McGilligan's pool with the sea. Then maybe some fish might be swimming toward me. If such a thing could be, they certainly would be. And then we see, like, it going past the city, and we see it finally connecting to the sea, and there's a weird, like, I always found it weird that there was this little stabilizing beam here, because that implies that this is a man-made structure. Cute little boat. And again, like, the water in this art is so beautiful. Like, just look at how it swirls and stuff. Some very smart fellow might point out the way to the place where I'm fishing, and that's why I say, if I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGilligan's pool. And we have some fish. It's weird how it keeps swapping between black and white. I might catch a thin fish, I might catch a stout fish, I might catch a short fish, or a long, long, drawn-out fish. Any kind, any shape, any color or size. I might catch some fish that would open your eyes. And here we get into the meat of the book. We start seeing some of these cute little caricatures of fish that uh, Dr. Seuss does throughout the rest of the book. It won't... I won't be surprised if it's a dogfish. I won't be surprised if a dogfish appears, complete with a collar and long floppy ears. Wolfing along, and perhaps he might chase a whole lot of catfish right to this place. And then, of course, this is taking catfish and dogfish literally. I believe, in reality, uh, a dogfish is either... It's either a seal or a kind of shark. I've heard... Like, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and then, of course, we all know catfish. Got whiskers. I might catch a fish with a pinwheel-like tail. I might catch a fish who has fins like a sail. I might catch some young fish with high-jumping friskers. I might catch an old one with long, flowing whiskers. I might catch a fish with a long, curly nose. I might catch a fish like a rooster that crows. I might catch a fish with a checkerboard belly. Or even a fish made of strawberry jelly. And then here we see some more, like, things. It's weird, like, he does... It's weird that his unrealistic fish look more realistic than his realistic fish. Like, because, you know, he's obviously talking about a jellyfish with a fish made of strawberry jelly, but it, this does not look like a jellyfish. This looks like a who that's been partially a cured. And the pinwheel fish, the 
sailfish. For some reason, I always remember the checkerboard fish. I might catch a seahorse. Now, mightn't I now? I might catch a fish who is partly a cow. And then, yes. Uh, obviously, seahorse, sea cow. Which I believe is a manatee. Some fish from the tropics, all sunburned and hot, might decide to swim up. Well, might they, might they not? Racing up north for a chance to get cool. Full steam ahead from a delegate's pool. Also, I love that they, they're slowly getting further and further away. See here? Miguel gets pool, 1,523 miles. Which, that's not too far away, actually, when you think about it. Like, it, let's say Miguel gets pool is in New England. That's maybe Florida. It might even be Alabama, I'm not sure. And we see just a dude chilling on a beach and some fish who are like... Some, like, weird goldfish-looking critters that are huffing and puffing. <coughs> and here's where we get the racist one. <clears throat> I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to... Some Inuit fish from beyond Hudson Bay might decide to swim down. Might be headed this way. It's a pretty long trip, but, but they might and they may. Miguel gets pool 4,227 miles. And I'll show you the picture, but, like, again, this is why the book was purportedly retired. And this is a dated depiction. This is not okay. And we will talk about why this is wrong and, you know, why they retired it and all that stuff. I might catch an eel. Well, I might, it depends. A long twisting eel with a lot of strange bends, and oddly enough, with a head on both ends. One doesn't catch this kind of fish as a rule, but the chances are fine in McGilligan's pool. And here we have just a, a cute little image of a two-headed eel looking at itself. I might catch a fish with a terrible grouch, or an Australian fish with a kangaroo's pouch. The funny thing is that I don't know if they knew this at the time, because, like, this is one of Seuss's older books. I believe it's from the 30s. I'd have to check the publication date. Hold on. Where the heck is the publication date? Here we go. Nineteen forty-seven. Okay. I don't know if they knew this at the time, but seahorses do carry... Male seahorses carry their young in a pouch. And then, of course, we have a picture here, which is a very Grinch-looking fish, and then a kangaroo-y fish. Come on. Come on, come on. Who wants to catch small ones like mackerel or trout? Say, I'll catch a sawfish with such a long snout that he needs an assistant to help him about. If I wait long enough, if I'm patient and, and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGilligan's pool. And here we have... Uh, here we have a sawfish, which sawfish don't look anything like this. In fact, it's kind of the reverse. They have a kind of... Like, they do have a longer snout than most fish, but it is a lot shorter than their body, obviously. So, and sawfish are one of the most unique fish because, like, their method of, like, eating their prey is literally just <laughs> thrashing their head about, chopping up the fish with their saw head. Some roughneck old lobster, all gristle and muscle, might grab it, my bait, then I would have a tussle. To land, or to land one so tough might take two or three hours, but the next might be easy. And then here's kind of a Larry the Lobster looking dude. I wouldn't be surprised if Larry the Lobster from Spongebob were based on this image. Since, you know, uh, that Stephen Hillenberg was a marine biologist, he might have read this book as a kid and it might have inspired him. The kind that likes flowers. And here we have a gorgeous looking... 
kind of looks like an angel fish. I, like, there are, there are fish with very long, flowing fins like this that look kind of flowery and stuff. I might catch some sort of fast-moving bloke who zips through the waves with an overarm stroke. I might and I may, and that's really no joke. And here he's swimming. Kind of looks like a frog with the flippers and stuff. A fish even faster, a fish if you please, who slides down the sides of strange islands on his keys. He might ski over and pay me a visit. That's not impossible, really, now, is it? And here we have just a tiny little Dr. Seussian Island, a little boat in the background, and then the fish on his skis. Some circus fish, fish from an acrobat school, might stage a big show in McGilligan's pool. And then we have a more, like, typical, like, Dr. Seuss image of a bunch of fish stacked on each other. It's weird how often Dr. Seuss just draws critters stacked on each other, like the cat in the hat balancing stuff on himself, or Yertle the turtle on top of the Tower of Turtles. Which is... Anyway, um... Where I might catch a fish from a strange place yet, in the world's highest river in far-off Tibet, where falls are so steep that it's dangerous to ride them, so the fish put on chutes, and they float down beside them. And then you have a bunch of, like, little parachute fish, kind of like those army men, going by <clears throat> what looks almost like a Sherpa. It, well, it looks more like, uh, it looks more like someone from the Chilean mountains than, like, a Tibetan monk or anything. <laughs> from the world's deepest ocean, from way down below, from down in the mud where the deep divers go, from down in the mire and the muck and the murk, I might catch some fish who are all going glurk. And there are these weird fish who just all going in a row chanting glurk, 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 glurk. Come on, come on. Whales! I'll catch whales. Yes, a whole herd of whales, all spouting their spouts and all thrashing their tails. I'll catch 50 whales. Then I'll stop for the day, because there's nothing that's bigger than whales, so they say. So, of course, it might be. And then just a bunch of, like, whales on their way to McGilligan's pool. Very... Yeah, like, there is kind of this weird, like, size here. That there is something bigger. Some, some sort of a kind of a thingamajigger. A fish that's so big, if you know what I mean, that he makes whale, or that he makes a whale look like a sardine. Kind of reminds me of the biblical Leviathan, this giant whale that was just bigger than anything you'd ever seen. Oh, the sea is so full of a number of fish. If a fellow is patient, he might get his wish. And then just this gorgeous tableau of all the fish from the book, and even more beside, all looking at the hook. Hey, I did make a rhyme. Yay, I'm good. Like, there's little elephant fish here that they don't talk about. There's sharks and there's things all... Hmm. Little guy with puckered lips here. And that's why I think that I'm not such a fool when I sit here and fish in McGilligan's video. Now... Again, this book was retired. For a good reason. It had a racist part. That said, I think they could have edited out the racist part. Like, there were, like, Dr. Seuss edited his own works within his lifetime. He, he knew that, he knew when times changed that he had to adapt with them. <clears throat> uh, and they could have easily taken the book out. I think the real reason they retired McGilligan's School was because it just didn't sell well. You know, it's not Green Eggs and Ham. It's not Cat in the Hat. It's not Grinchy Stole Christmas. It's one of his lesser-known works. Um, and now it's, you know, now it's never going to reach that level because it was retired. And because, you know, like, I don't blame them for shelving it, but I blame them for making a show of it. Um, you know, there, 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 there was a... 
and because like you could have easily edited out that uh, racist part calling Inuits the E word. Um, I mean, for goodness sakes, they didn't take away ice cream sandwiches. They just rebranded them from E word pies to ice cream sandwiches. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sad to think that a whole generation has lost this iconic piece of literature. Well, iconic to me, anyway. Because they, they, instead of, instead of editing it to follow the times, they made a big show of retiring it so that they can't ever bring it back. You know? And like I said, Dr. Seuss was not a racist. He was not a, he was not a bigot. He, he was a progressive. He was ahead of his time in many ways. Like, if you read his old political comics, the man was very in intelligent. You know, there's men of their time and there's men beyond their time. Samuel Clemens, man beyond his time. Theodore, er, Ted Geisel, man beyond his time. I don't know. But that's just my two cents. Tell me what y'all think. Do you think that uh, the book should have been edited, or do you think they're better off being retired? Obviously, the reason they were retired was purely monetary. There was no moral... I don't think there was really a moral high ground to all this. It wasn't like that... Because, like, you, you, you saw the book as I read it. It was not a piece of racist literature. It was a book about the amazing imagination of a child. Like, talking about, you know, fantasizing about all the different fish that could be out there in the world. And that's the part that, got, that captured me as a child. Again, like, weirdly, one of, the, one of the memories that always stuck with me is that stupid fish with the checkerboard chest... Anyway, that's going to be it for me today. Y'all have a good one. Stroy Smeller, I'm Audi.